Welcome to SFG Top Performance. Today we have our regulars, Derek and Jason. They're going to bring us up to speed what they're seeing out there. Jason, how's yeah. things going out there? There's a few combines starting to roll in the field. Very few, you know. The, there's, but what is coming out? I'm hearing pleasantly surprising yields. You know, most of that is on the north side of our territory where the crop has looked much better, up in that Indian Oil area and even closer to Milo. And I'm hearing a lot of 200 bushel yields, which kind of surprises me. I would have guessed 180, 170 in some of them. So pleasantly been surprised so far with the yields I've been seeing. But there's a couple things that, you know, I think as a guy, I've talked to guys there, well, maybe I need to go to my first field and combine it. But there's a lot of stock rots going on. I mean, I seen, you know, some ear rot, ear molds the other day. I seen quite a bit of it and there's stock rots. Make sure you're doing the push test and the pinch test where you, you go up to the plant and literally push it. And if it falls over, it's bad. <laughs> and if there's one out of five of them that's, that pushes over, it's time to combine it. In the pinch test, go to the bottom two nodes and pinch, and if you can pinch through it, there's a, it's rotten. So those are the fields you need to go to first, and make sure you're checking that because there's a lot of things going on in these fields. I've seen a little bit of everything in the last couple of weeks, and I'm sure you have too, Derek. Right, just even, so. I, I came back from came back from vacation this week, and just a four or five day difference on even some of the later corn, you know, 113, that was close by, and you know, the, the tops are coming out of it, which isn't a huge yield, but it's, you know, if the stock quality is questionable on top, it's going to be questionable on bottom too. So it's really, like you say, it's something to be, something to be looking at. Yes. But. Yep. We definitely need to be looking at that. And our beans, you know, I don't, there's going to be some beans relatively soon, maybe mid next week with some of these early beans, but the beans that are green, they're still looking good and boy, the pods are still growing. So I'm really kind of excited for our three, six beans and some of these merchmen, the three sixes are really looking good. I'm, I'm really kind of I'm kind of anxious to see what they're going to yield because they're still putting pods on they're still they look good you know sure. this late rains really help them and uh, so I think we're going to have decent beans as well and Derek can you talk a little more about what you've seen in the beans and yeah yeah exactly and it's kind of it's kind of surprised me over the last uh last couple of weeks the beans just haven't they haven't dried down as fast as I mean we're we're, we're going to be about to October before we even start bean week. It seems like even with um, even with the early ones, either two eights kind of an early early bean for us. And just just now, um, the bottom leaf bottom leaves are still there. You can still see green in the field. I'm still flying the drone over to see fungicide pictures and that sort of thing. And there's still areas that they're not all the way they're not all the way falling off. So we got some areas we still got at least a week out on a two eight bean. So I think the fungicides are definitely um, keeping everything you know. Uh, greener this year and having it having it hold on and catch these September rains. So like you say, it should be should be really beneficial. And on the corn, on the corn too. I know it was a dry year. There wasn't a lot of fungus out there, but these fungicides are keep, they're keeping them green. And um, corn corn overall, in my opinion, is a little slow slow to dry down. It seems like the guys that have um, harvested any, it's been anywhere from 16% in the dry areas where it came out up to 30%. So in in the same pass sometimes. So it's been. It's been really variable, and um, and like you say, I kind of feel the same way that so far the yields have been su been surprising, and um, I think it's based on what we've seen so far. I think it's going to be a pretty all right year, unless we have a bunch of storms and get into get into wind and it falls over, because it's not it's not going to take much. And I know we had you know we had a little wind down in our southern southern area that um, you know yeah, 50 mile an hour wind comes through, it's going to the these stocks aren't going to like that because they were cannibalizing themselves and they're just not they're not as good a stock so like jason said be looking be looking at your early stuff we were just talking before this that you know the the 115 day type um corn that stands out there really good you know let that one stand out there a little bit let it dry down a little bit more and go after your 109 day stuff that you know might start getting a little questionable because it's it's drying down it's it gave up it gave up earlier it's just naturally um, gets ready earlier so definitely definitely be looking at that and um, I'm out I'm out just about every day looking at places to go harvest and really just kind of across the board still finding still finding green corn so there's still there's still a little bit of time before we get into the really um, heavy heavy combining heavy combining area I bet in our area we're still less than 10 percent don't you agree Jason yeah there's very little harvested it's just what is out has been pleasantly surprising so sure Sure. Yep. And like I said earlier, I went. Oh, I was off for three days of this week. Went over, went over to Illinois and kind of drove through and did a little crop tour and just kind of looking around to see uh, progress, you know, elsewhere throughout the 
um, throughout the state and into Illinois. And really, they were in the same boat. I even went up um, Highway 30 and then across 80 all the way across to Illinois. And I bet I could count on my hand how many soybean fields are out. And there was only a handful of the ones that even looked remotely close to ready. So in corn, there's a lot of green left in it. And they must they must have caught a few more rains than we had for sure. And it looked it looked pretty decent, but a lot of um, a lot of green still left. So no one I saw one combine running in the um, you know I had four or five hour drives for two days going out there and I only saw one combine so it's been real slow and another thing I noticed on there on the soybean fields there's the you, you see who did a good job of weed control and who did a poor job of weed control and really across the board there's just weeds everywhere in these fields so I know we have some fields in our area that have a lot of weeds in them and it's just something that everybody everybody's fighting and it seems like it gets worse and worse every year so it just you got to keep you, you got to keep on the weed. You got to keep on the weed control. Make sure we have all the tools in our toolbox, and you gotta, um, yeah, just make sure you can't let them get away because it. it everybody's struggling. Everybody's struggling with it, and it's going to continue to be something that's hard to hard to manage. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's been a few things that we've noticed in the last couple of days. There's been a lot of airplanes flying around, Eric, and we were talking about that before, and that's. You know, I've, I've had several people ask me, "What are they doing?" Well, they're flying on cover crops. There's a lot of rye and triticale and wheat going on. So if you see that airplane flying up, it's after this late rain. They're putting the the cover crops on just before you know before it's harvested to get a little bit of better growth. And there'll be quite a bit going with the drill, I'm sure after. But so when you see them airplanes flying around, that's what they're doing. So you don't. I know I get a lot of questions and a lot of I'm sure you do as well about what are they doing? What are they flying? Why would they do that? Sure. Let's get a little bit early growth, and this rain's going to help that establish. So. So that's what the airplanes are doing around, if if you if you ask. <laughs> so. and, and and Jason, what, when do you think is the last you know in in the cover crop vein? When is it too late to be putting on cover crops, or uh, what's kind of your opinion there? That's a very good question. I've seen them go on in November, just before it froze, and they they don't do a lot in the fall, but they've done very well in the spring. So you know, rye rye is it does well in cold weather, so you're you're good for a while there now if you're putting oats on it's probably to the end of that because that's going to be dead this fall you know you want to have them on but most of them cover crops i would say within the next three weeks is probably the best time to do it but yeah i know there's going to be some fields that you want to do after it's harvested and it might not be harvested in three weeks it might be a little bit longer so you know i've seen them drive even in the first part of november it's not a recommendation i give to anybody but i've seen it work <laughs> so Yep, so yeah, it seems like, seems like that rye, if it's you know 32 degrees or a little bit warmer even throughout the day, you can almost watch it grow in December. It's just really, really resilient and um, works really good. But Charles, what's been going on in the application world? Or have oh, we got any wheels turning? No, no wheels are turning yet. We're doing a little cover crop spreading, just a little bit. Uh, getting equipment winterized and put away. The sprayers are finally done. I'm going to save one back. Just uh, I'm sure there'll be some CRP spraying you guys will have turned in here sometime this fall but we'll get that done here in the next month probably uh ready to spread lime all ready to roll waiting on some fields to get opened up so we can get out there uh, elevators are in good shape we're all ready to all locate the uh, milo they have it operational uh they'll be able to receive corn outside it, it's needs everything but it's everything but grain tested right now waiting on a couple guys to show up to be there at the same time make sure we can get everything running like it should but outside of that, everything's in good shape. All the locations, the, they got the new beet tank at Pleasantville. Same thing is full. That went up quick and it filled up quick. Um, that's, that's about it. So we're ready to go to the field. We just need some, everybody keeps forgetting that we got in the field about what, a month behind this spring. So yeah, it seems like we're dragging our feet here and waiting on corn. Well, <laughs> everything was put in late and yeah, we was hot all summer, but it's, it's, finally, it's finally starting to show. So. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you.